In this video, I'll go through some solutions to some propositional logic sample problems. Our first problem has to do with this island of truth-tellers and liars. So on this island, the inhabitants either always tell the truth or always lie. In this case, we've met two of our inhabitants. The first one, which we call A, says we are both telling the truth, and B says A is lying. And so what we want to do is try to analyze this and figure out who's telling the truth and who's lying. So what we do is we say we have two variables, two propositions. So we're going to call those P and Q, one for each of our inhabitants. So if we had had three inhabitants, we might have P, Q, and R. If we had four, P, Q, R, S, and so on. So P represents the statement A is a truth teller, or A is telling the truth. And P represents the statement B is a truth teller. Now you might want to wonder, why don't we call these letters A and B? I mean, those seem like reasonable letters. Well, A and B are the actual people. P and Q are the propositions. So P represents not just A itself, the person. P represents the proposition that A is a truth teller. So if P is true, then A really is a truth teller. And if P is false, then A is not a truth teller. Q similarly tells us whether or not B is a truth teller, which is what we're trying to figure out. So now what we're trying to do is build a table. So in our table, we're going to have a list of all of the possibilities for P and Q. It could be that P and Q are both true, in other words, that A and B are both truth tellers. Or it could be that P is true and Q is false, in other words, A is a truth teller and B is a liar, or false true, or false false. Now in order for us to figure out which of these four possibilities is actually the right one, now what we're going to do is look at the statements that A and B made. So A said they're both telling the truth. Now that statement is also either true or false. In this first scenario, where P and Q are both true, A and B are both truth tellers, and so the statement is true. But in all of the other scenarios, they're not both truth tellers, and so saying that they're both telling the truth is false in each of those situations. What B says is that A is lying. In the first two scenarios, A is not lying, A is a truth teller, and so that statement is false in those scenarios. But in the third and fourth scenarios, A is in fact a liar, and so that statement is true. So what we're looking for is a scenario, one of these four scenarios, where we have consistency, where A is a truth teller and said a true thing, or and where B is a truth teller and said a true thing, or A is a liar and lied, and B is a liar and lied, and so on. So if you look at scenario one, A is a truth teller, B is a truth teller, A told the truth, so far so good, ah, but B lied. So that scenario doesn't match. So we're not in this scenario. If we look at scenario two, A is a truth teller, B is a liar, but A lied, eh, so that doesn't match up. So we're not in scenario two. In scenario three, A is a liar, B is a truth teller, A lied, and B told the truth, aha, that works. And so now we're just going to make sure that our other scenarios match. In scenario number four, A is a liar, B is a liar, A lied, so far so good, uh, but B told the truth, so that doesn't match either. So our conclusion is that the only scenario that fit was scenario number three, where A is a liar and B is a truth teller. So that's how you break these down. Next up, we're going to practice translating from English statements to symbolic statements. So in this case, we're using the letter T to represent the statement, Bill is tall, Y for the statement, Bill is young, and S for the statement, Bill is strong. And so we're going to use these symbols, these letters T, Y, and S. We're also going to use the symbol, this upside-down V shape, which represents and, this V shape, which represents or, and then this kind of minus sign with the hook on the end, which represents the idea of not. So in our first statement, we have Bill is tall, but neither young nor strong. So we have to work around the way that we construct sentences in English, right? So Bill is tall. Okay, that's T. We got that. Now we have the word but. Okay, so but in English represents and not, right? So it's but is just like and, but it's saying that the thing that comes after that word but is a negative statement, right? So you say, oh, I'm, it's raining today, but I actually like the rain, right? So, so you're saying you're about to counter the thing that came before. 
right? So Bill is tall, but not this other stuff. So the main takeaway from that is that but represents the idea of and. So neither young nor strong. So neither here means not both, right? So there's the not that we knew was supposed to come after the and, right? So it's not a double negative, right? So Bill is tall and not both young and strong. So nor seems like it should be like an or, but it's actually an and, right? So when we say neither nor, we actually mean not both. So it's and not both young and strong. So we put parentheses there because we want to negate the both statement, right? We don't want to just negate the young. We don't want to just negate the strong. We want the not to apply to the statement young and strong. So that's how we translate this. Bill is tall and not both young and strong, or neither young nor strong. Now in the second bullet point, we have Bill is short, strong, and old. Well, again, we're using English tricks to kind of get around being as formal as we could be with using the words and, or, and not. So we see an and, that's good. But there's three things. We've got short, strong, and old. So we have gonna, we're going to have three things separated by ands. So short is the opposite of tall, so that's not T. Strong, that's our letter S. And old, that's the opposite of young, so this is not Y. And so we have three statements here. Uh, the longer way to say this would be Bill is not tall, and Bill is strong, and Bill is not young. But in English, as we so often do, we shorten that down to just say Bill is short, comma, strong, comma, and old. This time we want to go the other way. So now we have the same three propositions, T for Bill is tall, Y for Bill is young, and S for Bill is strong, but now we want to translate from symbols back into English. Now because of all of this sort of tricky shortening things that we often do in casual English language, there are different ways to do this, and so feel free to do as much or as little of that as possible. But in this case, what I'm going to try to do is translate these statements as formally as I can so that you can see how the symbols match up to the words. So when we say not Y, remember Y represents Bill is young, so this would say Bill is not young. And then that V shape represents the idea of or, and then we would say Bill is tall. So that's the sort of longest, most formal way to say this. Now again, in casual English, we might shorten this down and say either Bill is old, or he is tall, something like that. So we very often stick in the word either in English. It doesn't have any logical meaning. So saying either does not exclude the possibility that Bill is both old and tall. Remember in mathematics, or is always inclusive. So that would be maybe a shorter way to say that. We could say Bill is either old or tall, something like that. So I, any of these would be correct. Now for our next statement, so S represents Bill is strong, so Bill is strong. That upside down V shape represents the idea of and. And now we have a negate uh, with outside of parentheses. So and not, and so we don't typically use parentheses in English, but sort of we're going to think of that being parentheses there. What's inside the parentheses? Well, Bill is tall and Bill is not strong. So remember, this is similar to the one that we did before. We're going to say not both, not both tall and strong. So we want to say not both tall and not strong. So to make that a little bit less confusing to the reader, maybe we'll say Bill is not both tall and weak. So that would be one of the different ways that we could translate that. Finally, what we want to practice is creating a truth table for a compound statement. So it's often good to be able to figure out in which different situations are these statements true or false, and a truth table can help us with that. So because we've got such a complicated statement here, what we want to do is break it down. So first thing to notice is that we have three variables in this statement. We've got P, we've got Q, and we've got R, which means our first three columns of our truth table are going to be P, Q, and R, and we're going to fill those in in a methodical way uh, with the eight different scenarios of trues and falses. So P, half the time is going to be true, half the time is going to be false. So four T's and four F's 
in the Q column, we're going to have alternating two at a time, two Ts, two Fs, two Ts, two Fs, and then R is just going to go back and forth between T and F. So that's the quickest way to fill in our eight possibilities. Now when we make our truth table, the last column of the truth table is going to be this compound statement that we're trying to analyze, Q and not R, or P and not Q. And now what we need to do is break that up into pieces that are going to be simpler and easier to fill in. So the biggest way to break that up is the two statements outside my OR. So I've got my Q and not R and my P and not Q. Those are the sort of two biggest pieces of that. So I'm going to have two columns that come before that last column. One for Q and not R and one for P and not Q. Now I need to break down Q and not R, and I need to break down P and not Q. So how do I break down Q and not R? Well, I'm going to need Q, and I'm going to need not R. Well, I already have Q, so I just need not R. And then when I break down P and not Q, I'm going to need P, which I already have, and not Q. So I'll need a new column for not Q. And then to break down not R or not Q, I'm just going to build those off of R and Q, which I already have. So now that I've got my column labels, now I can start filling things in. Now we're going to go back from left to right and fill in things from simplest to most complicated. So not R is just going to be the reverse of the truth values in the R column. So instead of T, F, T, F, and so on, not R is going to go F, T, F, T, F, T, F, T. Not Q is similarly going to be the opposite of the Q column. So instead of T, T, F, F, and so on, it's going to be F, F, T, T. F, F, T, T. Now for Q and not R, what we need to do is look at the Q column and the not R column and fill in the corresponding truth value. So in the first row, I've got Q is true and not R is false. True and false is false. In the next row, I've got true, true, true and true is true. So remember, and is only true when both pieces are true. So when they're both false, certainly my and is false. False true, I get false. True false gives me false. True true gives me a true. False true gives me, sorry, false false gives me false. And then finally, false true gives me false. So FT, FF, FT, FF for my Q and not R column. Similarly, for my P and not Q column, I'm going to look at the P and not Q columns. So T and F is going to be an F, T and F is going to be an F, T and T is going to be a T, and so on. T and T is going to be a T, and finally as I fill that in, I'm going to get F's the rest of the way down. And now finally I can fill in my final column. So again, now I'm going to look at the pieces that build that together. So I've got Q and not R, or P and not Q. Now remember, or is true if either or both pieces are true. So F, false or false is false. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or true is true. False or false is false. True or false is true. False or false, false or false. And so there's my final column. So the truth table is complete once we fill in that final column. And typically, this is what we're looking for to make sure that that matches up. So if you're checking your work against somebody else's truth table, they might have broken down slightly differently, their columns might be in a slightly different order, but your last column and their last column should be exactly the same in terms of the sequence of Fs and Ts.